Ah, the Indiana Fever, a team that has been trash for years and now has some new life that makes me very excited for the future. What is up, awesome people of the internet? We are going through a little series where we are talking about each WNBA team and analyzing their season. Um, right now, we're gonna dive into a WNBA team that has seen its fair struggles for the last several years, uh, but a team that I think is showing uh, signs of promise, which is the Indiana Fever. So the Fever have wrapped up the year in 10th place with a record of 13 wins and 27 losses. But let me tell you, while that record sucks, there is a reason to be excited. Uh, the Indiana Fever have made significant strides um, from this past year. They have more than doubled their wins compared to last season. Uh, they upped their points per game, they improved their field goal percentage, and they boosted their overall efficiency. Uh, they even had a shot at the WNBA playoffs this season. And actually, before we dive deeper into their season, let's take a look at the Indiana Fever's roster um, this past season. We, of course, have Kelsey Mitchell, who uh, was a first-time All-Star. Uh, she led the charge with an average of 18.2 points a game. Uh, Nilissa Smith, in her second year in the WNBA, uh, was really, really good. Uh, she nearly averaged a double-double uh, with 15.5 points a game and 9.2 rebounds a game. Uh, rookie sensation Aaliyah Boston um, started all 40 games and showcased that she is ready for the WNBA. Uh, she averaged 14.5 points a game, 8.4 rebounds, and an impressive 57% shooting from the field. Erica Wheeler, the starting point guard, also started every game for the Fever. Uh, she contributed 9.9 .9 points a game and five assists. Christy Wallace uh, brought a spark on the defense and averaged 6.5 points a game. Um, and again, defense. Christy Wallace is very good. Uh, veteran Emma Cannon had a couple of uh, standout performances this season, um, and she finished with a um, average of 5.8 points a game on 45% shooting. Uh, Victoria Vivians uh, averaged 5.2 points a game. Lexi Hull started in 25 games, and she averaged 4.6 points a game. A uh, rookie, Grace Berger, also contributed, um, I think did a great job contributing for this team. Uh, she averaged 15 minutes a game. And in that time she contributed 4.2 points. Uh, Maya Caldwell, um, averaged 1.9 points a game. Uh, Zowie B joined the team, um, late in a trade, uh, with the Washington Mystics. Um, Queen Egbo ended up going to the Washington Mystics. Uh, Zowie B played around seven minutes a game and averaged 1.5 points a game. And Victoria Saxton, um, Aaliyah Boston's former teammate in South Carolina, Victoria Saxton barely played for the team. Uh, she played a total of 54 minutes the entire season. Uh, she also scored a total of 19 points. So uh, a, a huge non-factor for this team, for sure. All right, so now that we've uh, looked at the roster a little bit, let's talk about how the Fever managed to actually improve and what their bright spots were this past season. Uh, first and foremo foremost, um, I would say the dynamic duo of Nalissa Smith and uh, Rookie of the Year, <clears throat> I'm calling it even before they, before they make it official, a uh, Rookie of the Year, Aaliyah Boston. Um, that is a duo that is a sight to behold. Uh, their potential is enormous uh, and building around them should be a priority for the fever. But like I've been re really been enjoying watching uh, Nalissa and Aaliyah Boston play. Like, yes, there's stuff they should approve on, but like them two as like a one, two punch, I think is, I think it's great. Especially when they're like, when they're passing between each other um, during games. I, I really, really like what I have seen so far with Nalissa Smith and Le Leah Boston. And I'm hoping that uh, this duo stays together. And I'm hoping that um, the, the Fever decide to build around them as the key players on um, the Fever roster. All right, so let's talk about some more bright spots. So Indiana had two All-Stars this season, which 
If you've been following Indiana, you know this is pretty unheard of. Um, they had Kelsey Mitchell and Aaliyah Boston as all-stars. Aaliyah Boston was an all-star starter. Um, and it's been a while since uh, the Fever have had an all-star talent. Um, so that is a significant win for the team itself. Uh, also, uh, another bright spot I would say is the play of Grace Berger. Uh, Grace Berger, she really does have the makings of a future point guard in the WNBA, in my opinion. Um, she has a willingness to pass. Uh, she, I think she has pretty solid vision. Um, I, I do really think she needs to uh, refine her handles and her defense in order to really make it in the league. But I was impressed by her, um, and I'm hoping that uh, she has a long future with the Indiana Fever. Um, also, I would say a huge W for the Fever this season was their return to Gamebridge Fieldhouse. Uh, that was a huge positive for the team. Uh, after last season, uh, when they played at various locations, um, having a home base can make a big difference for gaining fans. Uh, you don't want fans to be going to different places all the time to watch a home game uh, for you. So uh, the Fever having a standard location uh, for all of their home games to me is a huge W. Um, and also uh, another bright spot, I guess, uh, because the Indiana Fever were so bad this, <laughs> this season, um, they also, again, have an opportunity for a top four pick. So lottery, option this season as well, um, well, this upcoming season. So they have uh, another chance to build through the draft and grab another uh, very, very talented young player. All right, let's talk about the future. Let's look forward uh, for the Indiana Fever. So in order to turn their promise that, that I saw this season into success uh, next season, the Indiana Fever should consider a complete overhaul of this team. Uh, if I was GM Lynn Dunn, here is what I would do. I would uh, wipe the team and start new. I would keep Aaliyah Boston. Uh, I, I would keep Aaliyah Boston, keep Nilissa Smith, Grace Berger, Christy Wallace. So four players will return from this roster. Um, I would negotiate a either a buyout or a severe salary reduction if I can't do a buyout with Erica Wheeler, um, as her performance just does not satisfy, like it doesn't meet her high salary. So I would say that Erica Wheeler was better than I thought she would be this season. I thought at times she did a very, very good job passing the ball. Um, and overall she was okay. She wasn't bad. Um, and she also wasn't great either. Um, but the Indiana Fever played her, paid her super max money this season. Um, she was the highest paid player in the WNBA, which is wild for someone who is only averaging 9.9 .9 points a game. Like I, you know, get your money, Erica Wheeler. I'm like, I am all in favor for people getting their money, but at the same time, uh, fiscally, I don't think it makes any sense the deal that Erica Wheeler got from the Indiana Fever, a deal, also a deal that no other team would have come close to giving Erica Wheeler. Um, and so uh, next year, the Indiana Fever are not paying Erica Wheeler super max money. I believe they are paying her like uh, regular max money, um, you know, over $200,000. Um, and it's just too much for the production that you're getting out of Erica Wheeler. Um, so I think GM Lynn Dunn needs to negotiate a buyout. If she doesn't, huge salary reduction, huge. Um, and then Erica Wheeler is permanently moved to the bench for the Indiana Fever um, and not a starter anymore. Uh, another move I would make is I would trade Kelsey Mitchell and Victoria Vivians uh, to the Atlanta Dream for Alicia Gray um, and a couple of draft picks, uh, a couple of second round draft picks. Um, I think Alicia Gray is really, really good. Uh, and I think she can help uh, Indiana out a lot. And also uh, the Indiana Fever need to move on from Kelsey Mitchell and Victoria Vivians. Um, Kelsey, Kelsey Mitchell is a good player. She can shoot the ball. Um, though she's not extremely consistent with it. Um, 
I, I, I think it's been long enough. Uh, this experiment is over. Um, Kelsey Mitchell and Victoria Vivians will not help Indiana win. Um, and keeping them on this team is just prolonging the inevitable. Like the Indiana Fever need to move on. And so that's why I think they need to trade Kelsey Mitchell and Victoria Vivians. Um, I think Alicia Gray would be a great pickup, uh, but they can trade him to another team or whatever. But um, but yeah, that, that's my thought. Uh, I would also possibly keep Emma Canna in the mix. It, it really just depends on uh, what Indiana is able to do in the upcoming draft. So I would, I would maybe uh, sign Emma to a um, training camp roster for now and then just sort of see who you're able to pick up um, in the draft. And if you pick up people who you think can hang in the post, I would cut Emma Cannon and um, move forward with, you know, whoever you pick up in the draft. Emma Cannon is a, is a vet. Uh, she brings vet leadership, which is great. Um, but if you can get somebody better, then why not? <laughs> um, I would also make a strong, strong push to see if Skylar Diggins Smith will uh, join the Indiana Fever and lead the team. Um, if she declines, which I wouldn't blame her at all if she declines, um, I would consider signing a player like a, like a Jordan Canada, um, which though I think Jordan Canada probably isn't gonna leave LA, uh, if you can't get Jordan Canada, I would say try Lasia Clarendon. Um, Lasia, I thought, I, I think Lasia has been very good this season, um, better than I thought um, she would be. And so getting a player like Lasia uh, could also be really good for this team. I would also uh, sign Kayla George. Uh, Kayla is, I believe, a, a free agent next season uh, with Las Vegas Aces and even though Kayla George barely plays for the for the Aces, she has a lot of talent. She really does. She is a point point uh point. <laughs> she is a post player that can actually shoot, um, and she's kind of solid on defense. And so having a player that can stretch the floor would be great. Um, I think that's kind of what Amanda Zowie was supposed to do this season, though. Um, wasn't that great at it? I would replace um, Amanda Zowie B uh, for. Kayla George um, because I I think Kayla George has a potential to be um, like a like a, like a seventh man off the bench type of player um, that of course she obviously doesn't get that opportunity with the uh, with the um, Las Vegas Aces but I think she could be pretty good um, for the Indian Fever uh, I would also fill out the remaining roster spots with draft picks um, and you know, if you're wondering, will this suggest that roster get the fever to the playoffs next year? And I say, yeah, uh, the fever need a starting uh, point guard to sort of lead the charge and getting a player like Skylar Diggins Smith or Jordan, Ho uh, Jordan Horson, <laughs> Jordan Canada, um, can do that for them. Um, I think they also need to grab some perimeter shooters, which I think they can get in the draft. Um, now, while this is what I would do, if I was GM Lynn Dunn, there's a more than significant chance that the Indiana Fever will choose a different route. Um, they might maintain their current roster, let go of Amanda Zowie B um, and Emma Cannon, wave Victoria Saxon, and they'll pick up, probably try to pick up players like a, like a Cameron Brink in the draft and think they're good. However, um, until they start fresh with the guards, the Fever will never, ever, ever be a good team. Uh, so that's my take on things. Uh, but what are your takes? Um, what are, what would be your potential off season moves? If you were GM Lynn Dunn, what would you do differently? Um, also, do you agree with my recommendations or do, do you disagree? Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Um, I am someone who is really rooting for Indiana to be a good team. Um, and by good, I mean uh, a, a playoff team. And so um, we, we will kind of see how things goes, um, but I think we really do need new, new guards for the Indiana Fever to for, for them to actually be a pretty solid team. So um, what do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you haven't liked this video already, please like it. Uh, please uh, subscribe to this channel. Also check out the rest of the playlist as I go through 
every single team in the WNBA and talk about their season this year. All right, guys, um, you all are awesome. Thank you so much for joining me on this fever field journey. Um, and until next time, guys, bye.